I have been reviewing and talking about games for four years now. In that time, I've played some of the worst atrocities known to man and computer alike. The reason I've garnered such a reputation from playing these abominations is because my fans kept sending me them. If it looked like it would cause me physical pain or disgust me beyond belief, they sent it my way. As such, I recently realized that I'm sitting at 345 games owned on Steam, and while I've got my fair share of good games, my library is also plagued by games that would drive most people to insanity. Today, we'll be taking a look at the bad, the ugly, and the holy fucking shit how could anyone in their right mind have conceived this, and why is this on Steam? You want bad games? I've got them. You want Steam Greenlight Asset Flips? I've got them. You want games so awful you can't even buy them on Steam anymore? Well, I've got them. Let's get started. We're going to begin with the games least likely to make you vomit. Games that aren't good, but aren't absolutely horrendous. Basically, they're the nicest guys in prison. Up first is Absconding Zotwar, a game actually about prison, or escaping it anyways. You play as Randy Crow, who has been wrongfully convicted of murder and is sent to Zotwar, the most brutal prison in the country. Every level has you facing increasingly difficult obstacles in order to escape. This game is bad for a number of reasons, but I think it boils down to Randy being a stiff piece of shit. His movement is very rigid, and most of the time you fail, it's because you don't have sufficient control over him to correct your small errors in movement. The obstacles are also inconsistent, sometimes setting off alarms, and other times not. This is a game that, 10 years ago, would have been on new grounds. It plays like a bad Flash game, and looks like one too, with its only saving grace being that it has music far better than it deserves to feature. The same can't be said for our next game, Call of Tomsk 7. Tomsk 7 is a side-scrolling shooter without any of the things that make a side-scrolling shooter good. Having different guns and a number of secondary weapons is all well and good, but when everything dies the same exact way and their movement becomes predictable, you've pretty much killed any potential fun you can have. It looks horrible and refuses to play at high resolutions, of course. This game really reminded me of those Thing Thing Flash games that were really popular in the late 2000s across Flash game sites. Turns out that the first Thing Thing is almost 10 years old now, and far better than Tomsk 7, because Tomsk 7 is shit. Now, not everything in this category looks like a decade-old Flash title. It's time to shift into full 3D with Glacier 3 The Meltdown. Glacier 3 is probably the worst vehicular combat game I've ever played. When you enter the game, you can choose Story Mode, except there is no story. It's just a series of tracks for you to play with no narrative whatsoever. Once you get into actual gameplay, Glacier 3 blows hail-sized chunks out of its own ass because its physics and controls make the game nearly impossible to play. Slightly turning your car will cause it to do a near 180 spin, and this is complemented greatly by the insane bounce physics that have you colliding with everything in sight. You've got about as much control over this car as you would a motorized bar of soap. The AI is probably even more lost than you are because they drive straight into mines and right off of cliffs. Only making things worse is this horrible FOV. I guess the game decided that staring at the ass end of the car was far more important than viewing obstacles straight ahead of me. Fuck this. The other racing game up next, High on Racing, isn't much better. This is a game where you try to collect points around a map and make it to the end before time runs out. When you open the game, you realize that High on Racing features the same ideological crisis as the all-time bad racing game, Big Rigs, where it's called a racing game, they even have racing in the title, but you're not actually racing anyone. At least with Big Rigs, it was patched, even if the AI never finished a match, but here, it's just you. Yep, 
just you with these shitty speed physics and the inability to turn, and with that there's not much else to be said. One thing you'll see a lot of with these bad games is that they'll get a number of unnecessary sequels. Remember Randy Crow from Absconding Zot War? Well, someone thought it would be a good idea to build a universe around him. Enter Break Into Zot War, where Randy must break back into Zot War after escaping it to save his brother, Larry. And if that wasn't bad enough, get a load of Fiends of Imprisonment. This one has narration. The government is in panic. Who will they call to help their soldiers? There was only one person who could help. A man who has every experience in absconding prisons there is to have. It was Randy Crow. He was their only hope. All these games are the same fucking thing. And you remember the title music from Absconding Zot War? They just recycled it for the other two games. If there's anything good I can say about most of the horrible games on Steam, it's that they at least try telling original stories. You can see some effort in these games to immerse the player in the story they want to tell. But as our next game, Eaten Alive, will prove, it doesn't always work out. Eaten Alive is an RPG maker point and click with dialogue that must have been written by the same 14 year olds who wrote Akame Ga Kill. It's a pretty shitty game, jokes aside. The controls are stiff, grazing a zombie is auto-death, and worst of all, the game has a permadeath mechanic where you have to start all over after death despite reaching checkpoints. I thought this was going to be your standard bullshit until I entered a room called Jim's Apartment, where you meet a gamer with a penchant for dildos. You even get to play his game, Dildo Maze. What is this doing in a zombie game? Who knows, but it's there, and it's much more fun than the actual game. And that's about it for games that don't make me want to jump out of my nearest window. The following games I'm about to cover are about to get a whole lot worse. Understanding the thought process behind the creation of many of the bad games on Steam starts with considering what game engine they're using. The most commonly used is called Unity. Unity has been used to make some great games, but due to its accessibility and its store where you can buy assets for your game instead of having to create them, the engine has been used to power some of the worst games on the Steam platform. Hacks use this engine because they lack the money, or typically the talent, to create anything of value, so assets are bought, plopped into the engine, and then games are made with these assets. The first game we'll be covering is called Bloody Boobs. Bloody Boobs is a game where you walk around a dungeon and pray to pillars while avoiding monsters. You play as a female of your choosing, and the character creation allows you to alter the size of their breasts because that's all this game is about. It's about big, bloody tits, and the game isn't subtle about it. But self-awareness doesn't mean jack shit when your game is jack shit. Gameplay is awful, consisting of running from monsters while trying to orgasm to praying to these altars. That's literally the entire game. Just running around avoiding monsters while the god-awful narration chastises you for buying this game when you could have supported charity. That's pretty ironic coming from the developer who must have had a raging hard-on at the thought of making a game where the punchline is boobs. Fuck you and your terrible game, cunt. Sadly, Bloody Boobs is somehow less insulting than our next game, Nuclear Shot. The people who created all the Unity assets with the Minecraft aesthetic must be swimming in money because a ridiculous number of lazy hacks bought them for their terrible games that they put on Greenlight. The big craze was zombie survival games for a while, but Nuclear Shot aspires to be more than that. It aspires to be Counter-Strike. It's basically Counter-Strike Minecraft without any of the quality assurance that you'd get out of that hypothetical title. 
the gunplay is broken, the AI is broken, and it took me about five minutes to realize it, but the level I was playing... Well, the level I was playing was literally just Dust 2. It's as good a replica as someone who would try making a game like this could create, but it's still garbage. And yeah, that's right. A game where the level design is ripped straight from another game was allowed on a platform created by the people who developed that game. Fuck me. Moving on, another big Unity craze is making horror games where the only true horror is how atrocious they are. Dark Knight is a survive until daylight horror game with some of the most disgusting visuals I've ever seen. Not disgusting by design, but disgusting because whoever made this clearly didn't understand how to properly use normal maps, the textures that usually give depth to objects in games. Anywho, in this game, you have to survive from a monster and find your way to help your mother who's on the second floor. The flashlight barely shows you anything, so that's already a no-go. It's nearly impossible to navigate because of that. I wonder if this was done intentionally because the people who developed this had no idea how to make something scary other than just make the game pitch black. This is horseshit. At least I can say that Dark Knight was trying to be scary. I'm not so sure I can say the same for our next game, The Graveyard. The Graveyard is a game where you're an old lady and you walk around a graveyard. That's it. That's the entire game. The reason this is so infuriating is because not only can the game not be bothered to have any actual gameplay, but the old lady walks so absurdly slow, likely to pad out the already short length of the game. By the way, most of the games I've covered up until now are pretty cheap, ranging from 99 cents to $2. The Graveyard, a game where you basically do nothing but walk around a graveyard, is $5. What a crock of shit! The last horror game we'll cover for now is called The Hat Man, Shadow Ward. As a critic, I'll usually make comments saying that a game looks dated and that it looks like a game from 10 years ago. Sometimes it doesn't, and the statement is hyperbole, but there is absolutely zero hyperbole when I say that this looks like a game from 2005. Conceptually, it's Silent Hill in a Hospital. Execution-wise, it's Silent Hill in a hospital, although not as scary or as good. Admittedly, this is one of the less offensive Unity horror games and even features some halfway decent voice acting, but it eventually becomes total cheese. What Shadow Ward has going for it is that it runs and it functions as advertised. The next game on our list is called Protocol. This is a game that doesn't work at all. That's right, it just keeps looping this message over and over and won't start. This is maybe the most insulting game that you'll see in this video, if only because it's still on Steam for sale. They are selling this fucking game that doesn't work and features screenshots from a game that clearly no longer exists. The last game for this category is called Fireflies. Right off the bat, you know this game is bullshit because the character moves like they've got three legs, all of them of different lengths. And one of their legs is their penis, so they're trying not to have it touch the floor, but they have to walk around somehow. This is truly the only way I can describe how horrible it feels to walk in this game. The game starts out by telling you nothing, so you have to figure out for yourself that you have to drag three random objects to these totems. After that, you enter the land of, I don't know how to properly optimize video game assets, where you can look at one area and the game runs fine, but you look at another area and the frame rate shits itself. I really thought all this would end when I got a GTX 1070, but no, 
it clearly hasn't. By the way, at this point, the game is a Slenderman clone. You have to pick up pages of a diary before some untextured monkey beast kills you. Also, the sound randomly cuts out in this level. Because of course it does. To the surprise of no one, there are a lot of Steam devs that make bad games who have little understanding of comedy. They believe that sticking the word simulator at the end of their game will be this hysterically funny joke and will somehow translate to a good game. Well, it doesn't. There's also those who make simulator games that hardly resemble games at all. Enter Skyscraper Simulator, a game where you buy, create, own and sell skyscrapers. Not a horrible concept, but the game does little in the way of explaining shit, and it runs at a low resolution, making it harder to comprehend what is even going on. It crashed the first time I tried to get it to run, and is bugged to shit. For whatever reason, this is $4 on Steam. There comes a point where you've played enough of these simulator games where you wonder if they're just scams. Our next game, Farm Championships 2014, sure seems like one. On the surface, it's a modernized version of Dog Shit We Shovelware from 2007. Several different modes to mess around with, different vehicles, but overall just lacking any substance or character. To get to the other modes within the game, you first have to win a race. The only problem is that your tractor moves incredibly slow, and you start out in the fourth position. The collision is horrific, and the game will reset your position if you try taking shortcuts. The reason I thought this was a scam was due to the frame rate. I wasn't getting more than 30 frames per second on a 1070. Now, that's not abnormal. There are some games that are just optimized poorly. But if you read around, you'll see that some people were getting a frame rate of 8, and the game was virtually unplayable upon release. This was never fixed. In fact, you cannot even buy this game on Steam anymore despite the store page still being up. Not like there's much reason to buy it anyways, because it's fucking awful. And the hits keep on coming with our next game, Professional Lumberjack 2015. A game where you get to be a lumberjack. Yes, you get to be a lumberjack in this blurry world where water is molasses, people don't communicate with you at all, you can move cars by bumping into them, and you can fall through the map. There's really something to be said about polish with a lot of these games and how most of them lack it, but this is another level. The UI is ugly as fuck and doesn't actually communicate information to the player as to how to play the game. There is seemingly no real end goal as, again, people don't talk to you at all. They just stand there. I went into the controls menu various times to see if I could get them to say anything, but nope. Eventually, you find your way into the vehicles menu, but they all suck ass and the physics are screwed. There's almost nothing to do here, but even driving around in an empty field and trying to pick up cars with a forklift is more entertaining than our next game. Grass Simulator is a game where you observe grass, and cows with bugged animations. That's it. You look at grass. There's a lot of levels. Snow levels, fire levels, and there's one level that actually got a laugh out of me, so I guess that's some success. But fuck this game anyways. Not every terrible developer uses Unity Engine for their bad games. Some use other engines for artistic reasons, I assume. If you're going to make a terrible game, at least make it look good, right? Operation Caucasus is a game that I previously covered on this channel, but it seems to have undergone some updates, and now with my new GPU, I can finally play it optimally. I wish I still couldn't. The game opens up with a cutscene where you can barely hear anything. 
The Soviet Union got over 70% of the world's oil from the car You are talking about paranoid anything about this subject. Now this place being used by a group of which dickheads who are trying to get which- When you enter the actual game, you're told to climb up a wall. You can't look in any other direction but up. Why would you start your game like this? Staring at a wall. Who knows? When you get behind these boxes, the enemy spots you because they're omniscient. The gunplay is fucking awful, with the animations being floaty, and the guns having no real impact due to a lack of tracers and corresponding enemy reactions. The level design is horrid, and feels like it was crafted by a child who thinks they understand level design and objective structure. Oh, and if you press escape, it STILL exits the entire game. This is maybe the worst use of CryEngine in recorded history, and one of the only on Steam beyond Crytek's own games. The lure of an engine to most of these people is its accessibility, and I think it's fair to say that one of the most accessible engines out right now is Unreal Engine 4. While many great games have been developed using UE4 and a lot are currently in development, the second it went free, we saw a wave of awful devs using it to try and create masterpieces of bullshit. Tales of Destruction is one of them. Now, I've played fucking Batology, X-17, and Time Ramicide, and other garbage of this nature. And the least I can say about those atrocities is that they at least had a story of some kind. Tales of Destruction has nothing and dumps you into an area to just shoot things. The game is bugged to hell and back, with the mouse and controller fighting over control of the game. The gunplay is horrible, and the UV map on one of the guns is broken or non-existent, meaning that the texture doesn't properly display on the weapon. This game does nothing right, even down to the running. The jogging sound effects sound like they were recorded by an obese man in a closet. Now, most people know about the big engines used to power horrendous piles of shit on Steam like Unity and Unreal Engine, but there's a rather underrated engine that doesn't get talked about much, and that's Game Guru. The first time I saw this being used was with Kimulator, an asshole licking wad of fuck paste where Hi. Jesus Good. sends you on a mission Jesus. for control of I North Korea. The second time I saw it being used was with The Face of Hope Underground. That game was so fucking bad. And finally, here it is again in a game called Remaining in a Dream. This is a game where you walk around a dreamland and kill monsters, and that's it. The game looks terrible and can't seem to decide whether it wants to be cartoony or realistic. The gunplay, calling it that is generous, is fucking terrible and for whatever reason features aim down sights. The sound effect is also ridiculously loud. You don't gain additional health level to level either, nor do there seem to be any health pickups, so if you're low, you'll hear this obnoxious heartbeat sound until you die. Upon further research, it appears that the developer who made this also made the Face of Hope Underground. I say this seriously and with no comedic intent. Primitive, stop making games. Just stop. They're fucking awful. With that out of the way, let's pay some old friends a visit. Digital Homicide was easily the most notorious developer of bad games on Steam until they messed with the wrong critic and went out of business. During their stay on Steam, they produced a freakish number of games, with their motto being to just buy assets from the Unity store and put as little effort into creating gameplay as they could. I thought I had covered most, if not all, of their games on my channel, 
but I had games in my library that I didn't even know were digital homicide games. Up first is Attrition, Nuclear Domination. Attrition was Digihom's attempt at a strategy game, and to the surprise of no one, it's awful. Basically, you collect assets and face off against other nations by launching nuclear strikes on their cities. You collect assets by clicking these orange dots, and then a helicopter is sent out to get them. Look at how small this thing is. The nuclear missiles take a ridiculously long time to get to their destination, if they even do. Sometimes they can be suspended in space and never move. And they're loud. So loud that you'll think one is actually being launched in your room. So loud that you'll wish there's an actual strike being launched at you so you can stop playing this game. Next we have Decimation of Olorath, another game set in space where you play as a monster who tries to destroy planets. Or something, the game doesn't make it clear. The attacks are awful and floaty, and it's almost impossible to dodge the enemy AI because of the first person perspective. There's not much else to say because this is the entire game. This was typical with Digital Homicide. Make games with no depth that can be summarized in five seconds. This can be seen in our following game, Mini Submarine Attack, where you play as a submarine and attack the ocean life. That is all you do. There's different levels, but you wouldn't be able to tell because the background never changes. Nothing ever really changes. Oh, and if you spam the missiles, no enemies will ever show up on screen. I always knew that Digital Homicide was full of shit and their games were worthless asset flips, but Withering Kingdom Arcane War takes this to another level. Anyone who watches my content religiously will know what this is immediately. This game is just Wyatt Derp with a magic skin. Wyatt Derp was another Digital Homicide classic where you played as a cowboy in a shooting gallery. It was followed by Wyatt Derp 2 Peacekeeper. By the way, the sequel was released on the same day as the first game. Withering Kingdom is virtually just the same game. Shoot enemies that come out in waves. You can use special attacks to kill a lot of them. It's bad. It's very bad, just like all of Digital Homicide's games. But you know something? Digital Homicide's games were horrendous, often bugged messes that were terrible, but somehow, even they often weren't as bad as the games we're about to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. These games here are the worst of the worst. Calling them games is a compliment, and some would say a stretch. They may not be representative of the worst games on the entire Steam platform, but they're certainly the worst in my library, so let's just get on with this. The first game here is Tomato Way, a game about a tomato seeking revenge. I think. This is a game so horrendous and wretched that it feels like a fever dream. The Sheriff. Як вам сказати, пан? Зараз він горить у пеклі. Зараз горить у пеклі. Я... Я тут перекусив трошки, шеф. Зараз візьму окуляти. Стоп! The visuals are disgusting, not just because of the quality and aesthetic of the models, but also because of how dark everything is, with you barely being able to see the enemies before they kill you. The controls have been lobotomized because you have to press right click to reload and Q to throw a grenade. Your fork weapon is shit, 
against the enemies, and I guess this is needless to say, but the combat in general is shit, primarily because of how many enemies swarm you, and the weapon you're given to fight them being this pencil dick shotgun. I don't think I've ever been as repulsed by a game quite like I have by this one. Fuck this! 24 Hours is an Unreal Engine 4 game where you shoot skulls. That's it. You shoot skulls. Some of them show up as red, others as black. You shoot them, and they die. The game is usually unfair bullshit, with the black skulls coming out of nowhere and auto-killing you. Have fun restarting at the beginning of the level. The bullets also come out of the gun in an arc and the sound effects are nearly as loud as an actual fucking gunshot. Masked Shooters 2 is Call of Duty Horse Piss Warfare. Standard multiplayer deathmatch with some of the most low-rent visuals and gameplay ever. I think I'll let this game speak for itself. Into the War is a classic example of how terrible developers can just give up on games and how there isn't any real accountability on the Steam platform. This is a game so astoundingly fucking bad that you can't even buy it anymore. It's another standard multiplayer deathmatch game except with somehow even worse visuals than Masked Shooters 2. When you open up the main menu, no option works except multiplayer. You get into a match, but no one is playing, obviously. This leaves you to roam around in this terrible map with these horrendous weapon models. What do you guys think about the black rectangle automatic? And what about the rectal examination shotgun? This game may also have been originally intended to be a bit more fast paced because when you jump, you boost jump, as if you've got a jet propulsion engine hanging from your ball sack. And for reasons that will likely never be made clear, when you walk, it sounds like you're wearing high heels. If you haven't caught on, the trend with all these games so far is that they're first-person shooters. Because for these people, it's likely the easiest thing they can put the least amount of effort into. I've found that people in general, these asshole-sniffing incompetents aside, generally don't understand what they like about games. They can recognize good and bad, but can't really tell you what makes up the good and how the player receives the benefit of quality mechanics, even if they have a grasp on what makes up the bad. Our two final games are very good examples of what happens when people with no understanding of game design whatsoever attempt to make titles. I'm really not sure which of these is worse. First up, we have Mortos. Mortos is a survival game where you survive against waves of zombies. I've complained a lot of times about how modern first-person shooters don't give enough feedback to the player that the enemy is being shot, but this is just something else. You've got an assault rifle, a pistol, and a shotgun, and all of them feel like shit. Shooting at enemies seemingly does nothing. There's no blood coming out of them, no tracers, no hit markers, nothing. I guess the game is headshot based, but even that's broken because I shoot them various times in the head and sometimes they don't go down. If you haven't noticed, it's very dark, so the game gives you a flashlight and an optional night vision mode. Holy fuck. This is actually what the night vision mode looks like. Not only is it disgusting to the eyes, 
but it basically takes any challenge away from the game. The AI is also messed up as they will fall from the sky at times, and the minimap doesn't accurately represent their positions. The incompetence of Mortos is so high that they give you limited ammo, but then have these spiders chase you across the map. You can melee them with a crowbar, but then you run the risk of them damaging you. So either take the damage or waste your ammo. This is a decision the player should have to make if they've messed up, and this is their punishment. Not if they've played normally and followed all the fucking rules. It should come as absolutely no surprise that Baby's first video game is so bad. But it just goes to show how awful this developer really is because they're incapable of even ripping off better games in this genre. And on that note, this is the end. Our final game is called Captivity. Captivity is a horror game where you're trying to piece together what happened to a friend of yours. You know they last came to these apartments, then they disappeared. Weak premise aside, this game is horrible. There are so many things wrong with just this opening level. Once again, hyperbole aside, this looks like a game from 1999 with the only added visual bonus from 18 fucking years in graphics technology development being Bloom. To find your way into one of these apartments, you have to find a key. This key is hidden under a bush. I found it randomly, and it's hidden in such a way that you likely wouldn't find it in any other way but by accident. I tried exploring around to find it, and I got stuck on a car. The jumping in this game is so loud that it pops the microphone as well. What really sent me over the edge was this door. This game has a door that opens into a wall. Is the developer that fucking awful? That fucking dog shit at game design that they couldn't have foreseen someone opening the door and there being a wall there? Do doors open into walls where the developer is from? Once you get into one of these apartments, you find someone dead. Who is it? The game doesn't say. You're then knocked out and wake up in some building. The dizzying effect is so strong and the room so dark that it could take you a good decade or so to get out of here. Once you're out, you find another dead body. And then you come across a television with two men standing near it. Then you die for whatever reason. It was at that moment that I decided I was done. All of the games I've talked about in this video are horrible, all for varying mechanical flaws, but the reason why these games exist should be evident by now. By setting the bar so low to get onto a platform, a bar which will soon be raised hopefully by Steam Direct, you get people with no experience being able to charge for garbage. And that's the best case scenario. Someone with no experience wanting to make a video game and then finding out that they can make money from it. Below them are the people who realize that they can put the lowest amount of effort into something without having to create assets of their own. And below even them are the scam artists who will promise a game, show screenshots from it, and then when you buy the game, it doesn't even work. How this has been allowed to go on for years now is completely baffling. The most blatant scams get caught sometimes, but as Protocol and other games like The District prove, they don't catch everything. Digital Homicide got run off of Steam apparently not because they sold these shit stains of games, but because they threatened Valve's well-being as a company by threatening to sue their customers. The idea that Valve doesn't see the sale of these games as a hazard to the well-being of their company is saddening, to say the least. The potential long-term effects of having your storefront associated with asset flips and games that barely work isn't something that should be joked about. But maybe, just maybe, things will change. Steam Direct is coming, and with any hope, this will be the end of this nightmarish saga. 
And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. One last thing here before I go, because I didn't get to say this on video before they went out of business, Digital Homicide, fuck you. Peace out, boys. Take care.